Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And since this is a new year, my first video for 2021, I decided uh, to do a top five list because I've been thinking about all the different science fiction books that I'm looking forward to reading sometime in the near future. So I thought it might be interesting to put the five that I'm most looking forward to in a list. Now, some of my top five lists are scripted, some aren't. This one isn't going to be. And uh, the other difference is this isn't going to be in any specific order. Uh, like from the one that I want to, like the one I'm looking forward to reading least to the one I want, want to read the most. Uh, because I'm looking forward to all of them kind of equally. So this isn't going to be in any specific order. So let's get into it. Top five science fiction books I want to read in the near future. Number five. The 11th Gate by Nancy Kress, published in 2020. Seek beyond the 11th gate. No one wants the city-states of the eight worlds to repeat the Terran collapse by going to war. But when war accidentally breaks out, everyone seeks ways to exploit it for gain. The Landry and Perigoy ruling dynasties see opportunities to grab territory, increase profits, and settle old scores. The downtrodden underclasses use war to fuel rebellion. And suddenly, ambitious heirs across the eight worlds can finally topple their elders' regimes, or try to. The key to victory and peace lies with two unlikely allies, Philip Anderson, a philosopher who seeks only the transcendent meaning of universal physics, and Tara Landry, the spoiled and defiant youngest granddaughter of an ancient dynasty. First, Tara accidentally discovers an 11th Stargate, Next, Philip figures out how to use it. Now everything is about to change for the eight worlds, for through the gate lies a planet of danger and mystery. Will what lies beyond lead to the ultimate collapse of civilization or to a new transcendent order? The answer lies somewhere behind the 11th gate. So how I discovered this book actually was just browsing science fiction books uh, at my leisure on Amazon. and. This one popped up and it's uh, being published by Bean Books. Now, Bean, one thing I like about their books is they really make nice covers for their books. Like it's really nice painted artwork a lot of the times and their books just look really nice and it just draws you right into it. So that's one of the things that kind of captivated me about the story is it looks like a really cool cover. That's a really nice piece of artwork on that cover. But the other thing was uh, I've read some of uh, Nancy Cress's short stories in the past and enjoyed some of them. So I thought I'd give one of her like fuller books uh, a go. Now the other thing about this is, uh, while the, the it wasn't actually the description that kind of drew me in, I kind of browsed some of the reviews on Amazon. And one of the reviewers had mentioned that in this story, there's a planet that is ruled by socialists and there's another planet that is ruled by libertarians or it's all like libertarianism. So you have a planet of socialists and a planet of libertarians and they go to war. And uh, so the, the, the problem that both uh, the governing bodies run into is both populations have become very disillusioned with their rulers. So I'm kind of curious how this author is going to compare the two different ideologies uh, like free market capitalism versus socialism. Kind of curious how they're going to do that and if they can do it without being biased one way or the other. Uh, you know, if they can do it and kind of show off the strengths and weaknesses of each different type of ideology. So that's one thing that really um, got me curious to pick up this book. Now, if it comes from a purely partisan viewpoint, I'll be disappointed if I read it and that's the case. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know if this book is going to be the start of a trilogy or an ongoing ser series or anything like that. I'm kind of hoping it's uh, just like a one and done. Um, because it seems like that's getting rarer and rarer to find. Like a just one-off novel. Everything is like the first in a trilogy or the first in a big long series. Which I don't mind the long series. Like I'm reading The Expanse. It's a great series and stuff. But every now and then it'd be nice to read just a really good one and done story and it seems like that was a thing more in the past it's like less of a thing now it seems like every big book that every book that comes out if it's a big smash hit it's got to have a big pile of sequels or it's got to be planned out to be a trilogy from the start so 
this probably will be the start of a trilogy or a series most likely but it'd be nice if it was just like a one and done uh type story number four william gibson's neuromancer published in 1984 Hotwired to the leading edges of art and technology, Neuromancer ranks with 1984 and Brave New World as one of the century's most potent visions of the future. The Matrix is a world within the world, a global consensus hallucination, the representation of every byte of data in cyberspace. Case had been the sharpest data thief in the business until vengeful former employees cripple his nervous system. But now, a new and very mysterious employer recruits him for a last chance run. The target, an unthinkably powerful artificial intelligence orbiting Earth in service of the sinister Tessier Ashpool business clan, with a dead man riding shotgun and Molly, mirror-eyed street samurai to watch his back, Case embarks on an adventure that ups the ante on an entire genre of fiction. So this is a story I've heard lots about over the years, and this is a book that its name comes up over and over and over again as like one of the books that you have to read, one of those great science fiction stories that you almost, like you have to read this before you die. And if you've never read the book, you've at least felt its uh, repercussions down through a pop culture from, you know, stuff like The Matrix and uh, Ghost in the Shell, things like that. And I think this was the book that kind of kicked off the whole uh, cyberpunk craze that uh, is really big right now in video games and stuff like that. Uh, so, and just from reading the description, the book sounds really interesting. Like the story sounds interesting. And uh, now the only thing is it's, I wish I could get this version with this cover because all the newer versions they have of this have really bland, boring cover. I, I like picking up books to have a really cool, have cool covers and stuff. Now, I know it has no impact on the contents of the story, but it just kind of looks nicer on the bookshelf and kind of draws you in a little bit more to read it. That's just my personal take anyway. But um, so, yeah, this is one that I've been looking forward to read for quite a while, and it's one that's going to be on my reading list for the future. Number three. Kim Stanley Robinson's Red Mars, published in 1992. For centuries, the barren, desolate landscape of the Red Planet has beckoned to humankind. Now, a group of 100 colonists begins a mission whose ultimate goal is to transform Mars into a more Earth-like planet. They will place giant satellite mirrors in Martian orbit to reflect light to the surface. Black dust sprinkled on polar caps will capture warmth and melt the ice, and massive tunnels drilled into the mantle will create stupendous vents of hot gases. But despite these ambitious goals, there are some who would fight to the death to prevent Mars from ever being changed. So this book got on my radar a few years back, actually, uh, through a co-worker, someone I'd worked with a few, year, a few years ago. We were working together and just through small talk, we both realized we were in the science fiction books. So naturally, we started discussing like, well, what books have you read and things like that. So he told me about this series and he said, it's really good. You have to read it. It's awesome. So this is part one of a trilogy, Red Mars. And then the second book is Green Mars. And the final one is Blue Mars. And it's supposed to be like a really good hard sci-fi story. Uh, now, the books are fairly thick, so it's uh, going to be a commitment and uh, so I actually own all three books. I found them at Chapters uh, maybe probably about a year ago and uh, just grabbed them, picked them all up in one shot, took the gamble. So hopefully I like the first one because if I really hate the first one, I won't be able to go on and read the second or third one. So I mean, if it really stinks, I'll give them away to someone or something like that. But I have a feeling I'm going to like this trilogy. So this is one I really look forward to reading. And... Um, I don't know, Mars is just an interesting topic too, as far as science fiction goes. It's just something about that planet over all the other planets, because I guess it's the closest one to being Earth-like, that it just something about it just captures the imagination of people and, it, it, and it's been doing it for a long time. So really looking forward to reading this one. Number two. 
Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness, published in 1969. A lone human ambassador is sent to the icebound planet of winter, a world without sexual prejudice, where the inhabitants is gender fluid. His goal is to facilitate winter's inclusion in a growing intergalactic civilization, but to do so, he must bridge the gulf between his own views and those of the strange, intriguing culture he encounters. So this is a book that uh, I've been looking forward to reading for a while. But I want to get the folio edition of this book. Uh, and that's actually kind of how this book got on my radar in the first place. Now, as far as the author, Ursula K. Le Guin's, now I've read a bunch of her short stories, a few of her short stories, and some of them have been really good, and I really enjoyed them. And uh, when I was looking through the different books on the Folio Society and trying to decide like what the next one I'm going to get, um, this one kind of caught my interest, and it looks really nice. It's a gorgeous-looking book. And I have saw like other copies or other editions of Left Hand of Darkness in uh, bookstores. But it's just, a, I don't know, this is like this really annoying trend right now. And it's giving books like a cheap looking cover that someone just whipped up in Photoshop within 15 minutes and slapped that on the book. And all the versions I've seen of Left Hand of Darkness right now, they've all got that just bland, cover that just does not want to make you pick the book up where the folio edition just looks absolutely gorgeous and has illustrations in it and stuff like that so that really made me want to pick up this book the other thing it's the the subject of gender uh, especially the last few years has been really controversial really heated topic you know a lot of uh, you know um, that's the word i'm looking for uh debates back and forth about this thing but uh it's, 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 I'm going to find it interesting to read a book written like this. That it almost sounds like it could have been, like it sounds more relevant now, like it would be more relevant now than it would have been in the 1960s. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious if this book is getting a resurgence in popularity right now because of all the talk about gender. Um, but I'm kind of curious on what the, how a person of the 1960s would have viewed it as opposed to someone living today. And it's not the first time that gender has been used or talked about or discussed in science fiction. Even with a lot of the stuff I've read, there was one story, a short story I read back in 1999. I believe the story was called Oceanic. And it was a short story. I forget the author's name. But it was like the human, human race. I think they were in like the far future or something like that. And humans had evolved this weird thing where when you had sex with someone of the opposite gender the act of having sex would cause you to switch genders with that person so if you had sex with a woman then when you were done having sex they would be a man and you would be a woman it was a it was kind of a strange story but it was, it was actually pretty good and then uh, recently probably about a couple years ago i read a short story which i can't remember the name of it now but it was about a the, the story wasn't about gender but it had like now, the story was written in the mid 80s but it almost had like a non-binary character in it they weren't called non-binary because that wasn't like a term that was used in the 80s there was some other term that the author used to describe it and the pronouns that the person went by because they were gender neutral they went by uh she him when you talk to him so they they went by both uh pronouns so they went she him and her, him, stuff like that's how it was. So he would say she, him has gone to the bathroom. That's an example. Um, but uh, the story wasn't really about that. The story was about a psychic or these people who had the ability to deep dive into a recently deceased person's brain to solve crimes. And uh, but that was one of the characters that was in it. So like the it's, it sounds like to a lot of us, um, the general population, the whole thing about gender and being gender neutral and all that sounds like a more recent thing, but it's been talked about and written about in science fiction for a really long time so i'm kind of curious about uh how this book would be and the other reason is um i, I want to read more older science fiction because i find that a lot of the older stuff is actually better and that's just my opinion and uh like that's, now i do like the new stuff obviously some of the new stuff like i love the expanse series and all that but i want to read more like more of the classical more of the classic stuff like uh stuff by ursula k Le Guin and uh more stuff by ray bradbury and isaac asimov and all stuff like that 
So that's the other reason why I want to pick this book up and why it's on my list to read in the near future. Number one. So I'm going to attempt to pronounce this author's name. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comment section how badly I butcher it. Xixin Lu, translated by Ken Lu. The Three Body Problem, published in 2014. Set against the backdrop of China's cultural revolution, a secret military project sends signals into space to establish contact with aliens. An alien civilization on the brink of destruction captures the signal and plans to invade Earth. Meanwhile, on Earth, different camps start forming, planning to either welcome the superior beings and help them take over the world as seen as corrupt, or to fight against the invasion. The result is a science fiction masterpiece of enormous scope and vision. So this is a book that's been getting a lot of talk the last few years. And you step into any bookstore in my area and go to the science fiction section, section, and this is always on the shelf. They've always got this for sale. You can find it anywhere. It's super popular. Same thing with, like, just like the Expanse series. You can pick those books up at any time. And it's a trilogy of books. It's the first in a trilogy. And what I find interesting about it and why I want to read it is... Uh, Number one, I think the cover is gorgeous. I think the cover, the artwork on the cover there is really cool. It kind of draws you in. So there's that right off the bat. I like nice artwork on uh, on books and stuff like that. But the other thing is I'm really curious to, to read science fiction from someone who's not from the West. And, uh, you know, what they're... Someone who has a completely different, I guess, cultural upbringing and a different way of viewing the world and how... A, science fiction story would work out uh, written by someone like that so this author is from China stuff like that so I'm really curious uh, like some Chinese science fiction and how it's going to turn out and what it's going to be like things like that so that really uh, made me interested to read this book not only that it's been getting like heaps and heaps of praise like universally like everyone loves this book uh, so that's why it's uh, and it's just another series that because the expanse is winding down uh, I've got two books left to read and then I'm going to be kind of looking for something else so this is a trilogy of books so it's another series that I can get invested in so hopefully I like this first one so that's my top five science fiction books that I look forward to reading in the near future so I'm curious if anyone in the comments section, anyone who comments, if anyone has read any of these five books that I've just talked about in this video and what you thought of them. Did you think they were garbage or did you think they were the best thing since sliced bread? And not only that, let me know uh, what kind of books you're looking at reading in the near future. And it can, doesn't have to be science fiction. It can be anything. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.